we have some really great news for me personally because I'm a huge fan of his and somebody that I followed for the past I don't know for the most for most of my life ever since I got interested in clothes it appears as if Nigo has been named newly as Kenzo's first Japanese artistic director since 1999 this is courtesy of New York Times the headline is incredibly offensive I think and really disrespectful because it, the headline says a hype beast comes to the luxury house sorry a hype beast comes to the luxury house um I don't think you could describe Nigo as a hype beast he might be responsible for creating hype beast culture um he might have played a part in creating it but this idea that Nigo is anything associated with a hype beast is absolutely ridiculous and if anything it's really disrespectful considering the work that he's done considering how influential he is considering um how many people he has mentored from afar from up close um and just considering the amount of absolute amazing product that he's been able to consistently put out regardless of what project he's working under and um Bavin Ape never really survived after he left it's kind of on his knees doing stupid puma collabs and other sort of garbage that they're doing at night at the moment and everything that Nigo has done henceforth has been absolutely amazing and i really cannot wait for what he has to present when he is at kenzo but i think the headline is absolutely disgusting personally um again hype is thing is interesting because when i was growing up hype was also always a derogatory term maybe nowadays the kids have kind of embraced the term hype beast in the same way they embrace clout chaser in the same way they embrace clout tokens in the same way they embrace being cringe right these kids nowadays do that kind of thing to be um somewhat ironic um or to somewhat be a little bit more interesting and add a little bit of flavor and layers to the whatever personality they're lacking i can understand that but when i was growing up high beast was always a derogatory term which is why when i first started again which is an, a little segue but when i was um 18 or whatever i think around that age i'm not too sure um I was one of the first writers on Hypebeast when it first launched. I think I might have been around when it was actually on a blog spot. And then obviously it got its domain name. And at the time, a lot of people on the forums weren't really happy about the name Hypebeast because they felt as if, like, again, it was a derogatory term. And I think it might have even had a hyphen in between. I'm not too sure. A space between Hype and Beast. I'm not too sure. Somewhere around that kind of time. But I was one of the first writers on there before it kind of become, obviously, what it is now is a complete behemoth. And I remember back in the day, you know, me and, well, Ke I used to, you know, talk to Kevin Ma quite a lot. Lot. he used to be sending me flipping paychecks you know little paychecks of $50 or whatever stupid amount it was through PayPal for some article that I wrote about some hundreds tea or something right it was a great time to be alive but I remember back then I couldn't step into I couldn't step in the doors of some places and I had a business card that had high beast on it and stuff with my name and shit that card actually was a reason to kind of send me away because people didn't like the term they didn't like what the site represented you know um conspicuous consumption materialism queuing up Aside, queuing outside of stores and whatnot and sometimes upside the stores right people didn't like it so it was really interesting now to see what's kind of transpired nowadays where a platform or a publication like new york times is using hype beast maybe as a celebratory term but more so as a derogatory kind of poo poo because obviously he comes from more of a streetwear background than a fashion background with a capital f it's just funny to see that term being thrown out there but again and the title thing i think it's really disrespectful i don't think it should be there i think it should be a streetwear legend or whatever it may be called or a streetwear god or you know whatever it may be somewhere along that kind of lines will basically describe him a bit more but you know these places need to get their clicks in it so this is a picture here of nigo at human i guess one of his human made stores um doing the he's he's probably got what some of the best i think nigo and maybe hiroshi fujiwara have one of some of the best arsenal of pictures of them standing inside of stores amazingly lit interior design impeccable stores merchandise to the t like look at look at that rack behind him with the exception of a couple of teeth at the back look how evenly spaced everything is meticulous that's that whole japanese otaku kind of obsessive compulsive attention to detail shit yeah yeah he's fiddling he's around there he knows every look and cranny of that store he knows where things are he can tell you what's in the stock room what isn't the stock room that is what it is all about look how evenly spaced those coat hangers are at the back absolutely nutty but anyway this article from the new york times detailing what's occurred it says for the first time since designer Kenzo 
Takada, sorry, resigned from his namesake label in 1999. A Japanese designer will once again run the Paris based brand known for its multicultural ethos and energy. Niga, one of the first streetwear superstars and in demand collaborator with multiple brands, Great and Good, was named artistic director of the house on Wednesday by LVMH Moet, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, Kendall's parent co company, which makes sense, right? Considering the other, the other hires they've done under the LVMH banner, it makes complete sense that they will try and get somebody who already has a following who already has um, a legacy, who already has a name, who already has quote-unquote clout that they could then plug into Kenzo in the hope that they could revive it. Um, of course, using some of their codes, but mostly just taking whatever juice that they have on their brand and installing it under the Kenzo umbrella and then hopefully using it as a jumping-off point to then doing other projects and maybe down the line change direction. But they clearly want to change the kind of maybe customers they attract into the store, the way the store is presented, the stuff they do, who they're aligned with, because this is a full, you know, head-to-toe redesign. You think of what Nigo was doing at Babe during his heyday from the cafe to the people that were in the lookbooks to the books that they did to the toys to the kids stuff like it was a complete head to toe it was a complete world you know people say oh we could create a world in fashion all this kind of stuff nonsense and it's just a t-shirt no he was creating his own world that existed only where he was where the stores were everything how it was merchandised how the interior design was done it was just out of this world so you can imagine Kenzo are really in this for the long game because when you hire someone like Anigo you're not hiring him just so you could redesign a couple of jackets and hoodies you're redesigning you're hiring him so that he can basically you know essentially change the entire universe around Kenzo in the hopes that to attract new audiences and to just make it somewhat was it self-sufficient but to kind of rewrite whatever stuff they have out there at the moment it continues the announcement the announcement, sorry, the announcement followed the June departure of Felipe Oliveira Baptista after just two years at the brand of Siski Home, which is disappointing because I thought that last collection, I thought it was loads of like ski wear, kind of Japanese inspired ski wear stuff that looked pretty sick, to be fair. Some of the pictures of the of the runway show where people flipping and doing kind of car wars and shit was mad, especially with all the garments, you know, twirling around them. So it's sad that that didn't obviously become successful. And again, that was something that I'd imagine a lot of the show studio people were sort of like happy about, like artists artistically and the in you know inspirations behind it and the references and whatnot but commercially didn't sell so this is this again is another wake-up call for the fashion industry or people in general especially some of the more snobbier types who are always rabbiting on about people going to fashion school and doing conventional education and not having the knowledge and all this nonsense and who copies or who copies this at the end of the day what we've seen nowadays is that the, everyone's a consciousness especially when it comes to clothing and whatnot has been sort of awakened right everyone especially when i said before like sneakers is a multi-billion dollar industry there's no such thing as a subculture anymore they don't exist everybody and everything knows every, everybody knows everything to a certain extent so if that's the case the customers have now become the boss right the customers now dictate who and what sinks and who and what survives right who wants six and who what survives and they also are the ones who are going to vote for their feet and vote with their wallets when it comes to backing the certain brand so the certain brands are selling are selling because of the community the brand has been able to create or the brand owner and if you want to survive you're going to have to replicate or basically build that yourself right that's what you're gonna have to do or, or just jack the person and basically install them into your brand but this is the way forward that most people are going to start going so don't be surprised to see a few more people like maybe a junior ambush i'm not too sure what she's doing at the moment but there's a few other people dotted around even no babazian i could definitely see him maybe getting to you know um, hit up by some brand in order to kind of bring his Noah fan base into whatever fashion house that is that he would get offered from I can definitely see that happening going forward a lot more it says yeah it was part of a spree of activity of VMH which named a uh, new designer at Pucci this month and recently became minority investor in Celine um, designer Phoebe Fowler's not going to solo brands a lot going on in the VMH isn't it there's an epic picture here of Pharrell and Nigo back in the day Pharrell wearing of course the iced out G-Shock not looking that much younger than what he looks like today um nigo who's um who like kenzo uses one name is just best known for his brand the bathing ape he opened his um first t-shirt shop in japan 1993 nowhere you know the deal and his kind of first part and helped vo vote him to streetwear fame before the lines appeared outside supreme new york they formed in tokyo outside of bape of course what well, mainly called nowhere that he kind of co-owned with hiroshi but we continue in a news release nigo pointed out that not only did he had entered fashion the same year of your major acquired kenzo 
but he was born in 1970 so the year that Takada Kenzo San opened his first store in Paris we both graduated from the same fashion school yeah that's what I was remembering I think they did if I'm not mistaken Hiroshi and Nigo both graduate from the same fashion school which is why I think some people used to refer used to say they look similar which is why I think Nigo was it was it Nigo Nigo I forgot that the, the, there's a reason why anyway this is some law that I forgot but I remember I used to be flipping balls deep in this shit it continues as and like Nigo so like Kenzo, Nigo added that he was a, his view of creativity is rooted in understanding the many different cultures taking over the brand, he said, will be the greatest challenge of my 30 year career, for sure. But I think he's he's up for it. I think Kenzo is on his knees. It needs to be revived. Um, his voice and his aesthetic and his codes and his approach and his sensibilities and creativity is, is completely different to anybody else they've had there as creative director prior. So there's no danger of him regurgitating or putting out the same things that they did previously. And he's also bringing with him a family base that's just rabid like i'm a huge hiroshi fujiwara and nigo fanboy like i'm gonna follow them wherever they go so if people like myself are willing to do that just imagine what the kids are willing to do and everybody else that has disposable income he's gonna bring a whole heap of new customers to that brand it's gonna be fucking awesome it continues it says nigo started a small brand called human made in 2010 and in 2011 sold 90 percent of his babe shares in to hong kong um the fashion conglomerate it which i'm sure is the same conglomerate that also owns hypebeast the place i used to work at which is weird isn't it right strange leaving the brand officially in 2013 later you joined Unicode's creative director UD collection Bape hasn't survived since then I think they had a couple collections after he left that were really good which you could tell maybe he designed them ahead of time or the original from what I heard from the grapevine the original team that he was with at Bape towards the end started leaving anyway and then when he left most of them ducked out a few years later so whatever team they've got designing now are just you know whoever you know what I mean just some randoms which is why the clothes look so disjoint like some collections look good others look crap as soon as they do collaborations they look stinky like i still remember seeing flipping aj tracy walking down the street in that bait puma jacket and nearly like went to punch a wall it was so offensively ugly but he continues said um his long time practice and partnerships and capsule collaborations funding building a boys club and ice cream with um with Farrah williams sorry collaborating with ideas coca-cola mac cosmetic kanye and cause and gradually brought him into the fold of avid collaborator virgil abloh indeed miss abloh told vogue um nigo was among the real mentors i had in fashion little wonder that in late 2018 19 sorry mr abloh settled into the royal secretary director um for menswear Louis Vuitton he chose Nigo as his first official collaborator which is an amazing kind of reach back again that's something people don't give Virgil credit enough for the fact that when or with his platform he has put on so many well not say put on but he has provided he has kind of shone a light on other people more so than I've ever seen anybody else especially in his infancy right you'd imagine when you're first getting your feet on the table at a big house you want to just you know you know have your voice and do your own thing maybe for a couple of seasons maybe five years or whatnot and then get collaborators in but he went straight in preaching back working with people giving them little capsule collections giving them little thing whatever it may be called and i think the collaboration with who knows how this played into it this could have played a big role into nigo getting a role at kenzo right the fact that he was able to kind of illustrate and show that he could work under that system i don't think that's true because most likely when it comes to these deals there's stuff that's been talked about for a long time so i'm sure this kenzo deal was something that was even superseded his um collaboration with um virgil but i like to imagine that story is true and it just for the just for the narrative of it it says here yeah, that was when kenzo was being designed from bits of baptiste who emphasized sustainable fabrics and subdued aesthetic uh his predecessor carolyn lim and humberto lino um, the taste making founders of the opening ceremony who ran Kenzo of a 2011 2019 had bought the contemporary pricing and more streetwear to the vibe were they responsible for that flipping horrible tiger jumper Carolyn Lim and um, Humberto Leon the founders of flipping uh, opening ceremony I don't think that's around anymore is it? I'm not too sure but that's a long run they had right 2011 2019 they had Kenzo in a chokehold hopefully Nigo can you know do away with that fucking jumper he says he announced Sydney Tololendo um LVMH fashion group chairman and chief executive officer said in a statement the arrival of an extremely talented Japanese designer will allow us to write a new page in the history of Takada's Kenzo Takada Kenzo founded Nigo to start Kenzo on Monday one week before fashion Paris fashion week begins absolutely incredible I cannot wait to see what he puts out on the runway I think it's going to be a success regardless the headline from Vogue from sorry from New York Times is absolute bullshit but Nigo's a legend and to illustrate you how much of a legend he is is to me i've got tons of these flipping japanese magazines one of them being asayan but i've got many many others i've got flipping magazines 
magazines like huge and stuff that I used to buy off of like um Japanese auction sites like Yahoo auctions and stuff and get them proxied over and sent and paying ungodly amount of customs for you know parcels that are weighing you know crazy amounts and from this magazine I think this might be from this is from February 2002 issue of Asayan and it says here I think number 892 actually here it's issue there's actually a spread here from a bathing ape spring summer 22 to 2002 which i think deeply illustrates my aesthetic when it comes to streetwear and what i would actually end up designing if i ever put out a brand myself like you just can't go wrong with this kind of quintessential amazing um period of streetwear i think it was easily one of the best right just simple everything was a hoodie a t-shirt a pair of jeans some trainers a nice down jacket just crazy simple stuff but look at this this is like baby Nick 20 2002 the heyday right some of the best stuff you've ever seen like amazing you got nigo there modeling a great little down jacket too right just crazy crazy good stuff like amazing get another thing here hopefully you can see on the screen you've got a great assortment of jackets here on the left hand side also that i'm showing for the camera awesome got, oops sorry about that you got another set there all right just crazy crazy good stuff like he's legitimately one of the best one of the greatest of all times people that probably don't put him a lot more respect on his name than needed but hopefully with this platform at kenzo people will be reminded of just how talented of a designer he is from everything again from store design to merchandising to packaging right the little plastic bags like all the stuff that he does the attention to detail even just the label i think if i'm not mistaken who invented that i think they're gonna say hirochi i think hirochi said he invented that label that they put on the outside on the on the sleeve that he that placement and then obviously nigo kind of co-opted that and put his on his no i think hiroshi put his on the bottom of the hem and then if i'm not mistaken nigo put his on the sleeve the little um logo the the little label with the sometimes it had the bait man head backwards or it had it it had it backwards or it had it the other way around or had it upside down depending on what design you got but all those little touches the stuff that you know you don't take it for granted even some of the them some of the bape stores i remember the one here in london it had some of the t-shirts were basically in these massive glaze glass panels that you had to kind of slide back and forth some of the limited edition ones like just crazy cool marks crazy cool merchandising that was almost kind of um it felt like you were walking into an art gallery but you could purchase the stuff right under a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars and stuff it's just crazy good man but look at all this stuff look at all this stuff all this stuff it's just amazing man this is this is the stuff that i live for like this great amazing designer and again now that he's got the option this is again young nigo here look at him with his fucking bowl cut and his massive glasses like just you know that is the goat he is the goat so i can't wait to see what he does at kenzo congrats to him well deserved well deserved